Oh. Yes, you could. Right. Yeah, yeah, again. yeah. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Thanks. <laughs> and thank all the participants for joining us today. Hope this workshop will be interesting for you and helpful. Uh, I'm going to discuss some uh, basic things uh, about just give you an introduction to CASA. Uh, my name is Bayantina Olga. I am a support scientist at CHAI. Uh, sorry for my name right now in Zoom session. I will change it later, <laughs> need to adjust it. Um, and uh, actually I'm one of these weird scientists who have started uh, to their career with uh, working with CASA, not apes. So I'm going to discuss with you all the stuff that was surprising and uh, things that I would like to uh, know back then when I just started to use CASA. Uh, first of all, <laughs> pun intended uh, that CASA is a uh, home house in Spanish. So let's uh, have a small house tour with this uh, presentation. Uh, as I said, uh, that will be just a basic introduction. Uh, so there will be some spoilers to the following lectures, because you will see all of this stuff uh, in more details later with the following presentations. Here I'm just going to say something about uh, things like how you need to start CASA, how you can use tasks, basic tasks. Um, and also we are going to compare uh, CASA with apes because probably that's the easiest way to understand how all these things uh, work. Um, sorry, we still have some uh, Halloween decoration here. Uh, first of all, uh, CASA originally was created to work with uh, compact arrays data such as ALMA and VLA. And I actually started to work with it when I worked with uh, VLA data. Uh, but uh, also you can uh, work on the single dish data and lately there are some uh, tasks to work with VLBI. This process in uh, preparation, but in the latest version of CASA, you already can test some experimental tasks for reducing VLBI data. And I will we'll, we'll talk about it uh, a lot during this uh, workshop, but I will uh, say just a couple of words about it at the end of my presentation. Um, uh, I think that uh, the main point for me, for my presentation is just to provide you with all the web sources that you can use and where you can find uh, everything about CASA. Uh, like I, I think that you shouldn't know the answer, you need to know where to find it. And uh, there are some useful links uh, with this presentation. Uh, oh, there is a copy of it on Wiki page. So you already right now you can click on all these uh, links and for example, check documentation or um, download the CAS if you don't have it yet. Um, uh, also, there are some QR codes, so if you just uh, looking on your screen right now, you can scan it and still check the links with your phone, for example. Um, a bit about uh, the structure that we have here. Uh, first of all, I will tell you a bit about uh, downloading uh, the CASA, uh, how you need to, that's pretty easy to install it. So I, I will not really say you how to install it, but uh, we'll discuss a bit how you need to work with uh, uh, CASA when you first started. Uh, also, please uh, check all these nice documentation. Right now, uh, there are a lot of uh, web links and web pages with uh, uh, really uh, detailed descriptions of each and every uh, task that you will use in CASA. Uh, I just would like to separately uh, say you a couple of words about CASA VLBI. Uh, that's uh, exactly this. Uh, you can check it with some other links. Uh, for example, we have some uh, instructions for 
exactly will be a data uh, reduction. Um, so please check it too. And also, if you have any questions uh, outside of this workshop, uh, later with your data, you always can uh, write to help desks. Um, there are several of them, and you will uh, got all the answers, I suppose. Uh, first of all, how you need to download the data, here is the link. And uh, there are two latest versions right now available. Uh, one uh, is using is uh, Python 3, like the latest version of Python. And the previous one uh, uses uh, Python 2. That's uh, probably the only difference here. Uh, but uh, you, you are free to choose between them. Uh, and uh, installation with CAS is uh, really simple. That's not something like apes that you need to know how to do it or you need to have a skilled uh, colleague of yours. Uh, that's just a couple of clicks. You need to download the start file. You need to unpack it and install. That's it. You can use CAS after this. Um, so please check it. I suppose that uh, you will enjoy installing of it. A <laughs> uh, couple of words about uh, data formats that we use with CASA. Uh, the first weird thing that that's not FITS files. Uh, you still can uh, check your FITS images. You can uh, check them with a special environment that name the name of viewer so uh, but you can't really produce uh, uh, do any data reduction on them uh, you need to uh, convert your feeds data to special uh, data data format uh, with the name measurement set and or short it will be ms uh, that's a standard CASA data format uh, and we will i will uh, describe it a bit more later uh, but right now you need to just know that there is a main table with your visibility data and some sub tables um, uh, here in the this yellow window you can see how does it look uh, instead of uh, like catalog in apes uh, you will have your actual folder on your disk. So you can uh, see all these uh, tables and you can check them. Uh, inside CASA, you can uh, browse them with browse table uh, task. It's here. So uh, just um, download some test data and try to browse it. So you can understand how all these tables look like and how you can operate with them. Um, also, uh, one maybe weird thing that we have with CASA, and I was surprised with it when I just started to work with it, uh, that uh, you have not only this MS file with your main table, with your uh, visibility data, but also you have uh, MS uh, table with extension flag versions. Uh, there are just uh, versions of your uh, of flags attached to your data. Uh, most probably you will have it uh, right from the beginning when you just download your data, if you work with uh, Alma or VLA data, uh, or you can uh, get this one uh, after your first flagging of the data. Um, uh, there are all the versions, all the tables, um, and you can also browse them uh, with flag uh, manager uh, task. Um, and apply uh, different uh, versions of uh, these tables uh, with uh, special tasks that we'll describe a bit later. Um, so how we need to start CASA? Again, that's uh, pretty easy. You just need to type CASA or uh, some, of course you have some uh, other versions. Uh, for example, if you would like to uh, uh, start some cast with some pipeline ext extensions or any other things. Uh, but uh, basically to just uh, check the basic tasks, that's enough to type CASA. 
I have a bit old version here, but uh, yeah, that's just an example of uh, the window that you will have. And uh, you will type all of this in a console, but also you will have uh, one window that's a log message window and uh, you need to pay attention to this one. Uh, there we will have all the inputs for your tasks. Uh, you can uh, check them uh, right, here, oh, uh, right here in this uh, log window. Uh, and also uh, all the stuff from this window will be saved uh, in a special uh, text file on your disk uh, with the name casa date dot log. Uh, you can browse the file if you would like to check your inputs from your previous session or if you're looking for some errors or uh, names of your calibration tables, anything. Um, oh, this uh, window is really useful because here you will see in uh, highlighted in red all the errors. So pay attention to it and uh, Try to save all these files when you work with your data now during this workshop, because that's a way to check what you did wrong and uh, what were your errors here. Um, and just a bit about uh, CASA tasks. Uh, really, that's, uh, see, uh, that's similar to Ape syntaxes. Uh, so you also have all these stuff like uh, default task, get task. Uh, you can check all the inputs, uh, all the parameters uh, on in your terminal. Uh, and uh, when you are done with setting your parameters, you just can uh, type go and start a task. Uh, also, uh, here a bit uh, lower you can see how you can just uh, write all the, uh, your, not, you shouldn't always put all the inputs, uh, all the par parameters. You can uh, have just several of them, the most uh, uh, useful and uh, those that you don't wanna leave as default. Um, so you just can write uh, a task like this. Um, there is a couple of links to a uh, description of all the CASA tasks and a global task list. Um, there you can check each task, like description of it, all the parameters, uh, what does it do, uh, how you can uh, set the parameters and uh, syntaxes of it, for example. Um, and that's really useful that all these uh, tasks are written really in Python, so Python. So if you have any experience with Python, you're probably ready to go and you know what to do with all these tasks, how to set them, how to write these syntaxes. Uh, and if you did something wrong, uh, you can abort any task um, just with the uh, uh, by clicking Ctrl C or Ctrl Z, uh, but uh, make sure that uh, every that uh, this abort of task didn't do something bad with didn't mess with your uh, uh, CASA uh, session. Maybe you need to restart it sometimes. So uh, check whether terminal still responds you uh, whether you can type something new and uh, also check uh, your message in log file. Um, and again, since uh, tasks are written in Python, that's really easy to uh, write your own scripts. That's uh, super useful uh, for speeding up your uh, data redaction because you can just use uh, some scripts for your uh, favorite tasks. For example, I did it for all the imaging uh, because that's just easy to set uh, your data and uh, change, for example, only bands that you use. 
Um, here are some examples, uh, like that's an uh, input that I just showed you in the previous uh, slide, uh, and you can put it uh, in uh, Python script, something like this, and then uh, you can run it with each of these tasks. Uh, there are several ways to run a Python script in CASA. Um, oh, and also, uh, after you run uh, any, any task in CASA, you will get uh, a file with the name uh, of the task and uh, dot .last, extension dot .last. Uh, there are... Uh, there are stored all, all the uh, inputs that you have for your uh, task, all the parameters of it. So you just can reinstall it if you would like to run the same task the second time. Uh, and uh, you can run uh, Python scripts in, uh, in CASA outside of CASA. So you just need to write something like that in your terminal outside of CASA and uh, you still will get the same result as if you uh, run your script in CASA inside of it. Um, just a bit of uh, ways to plot the data in CASA because we'll have a separate talk about this and you will see a, a lot more information about it. There are just uh, several things, so maybe you can play with it a bit with your own version of CASA. And uh, for example, to um, plot uh, your MS data from your data from your measurement set, you uh, just need to uh, write in terminal plot MS. That's the first way to plot the data. Uh, here you can select uh, your measurement set. You need to choose your uh, field or fields and your uh, spectral window. That's the uh, same as about the same as uh, if in um, in apes. And uh, you need to just uh, push the button plot. Uh, this one also can be uh, run outside of CASAs, you can just uh, write CASA plot MS, uh, but that doesn't work all the time. So be careful and uh, try to use it inside CASA. And here is an example. Uh, that's really powerful thing, really. Uh, you can plot uh, amplitudes uh, versus channels, time, uh, baselines, uh, all kinds of them. Here uh, you can change it with a tab access. Um, also, you can uh, average your data, check only one spectral window, check only particular period of time. And uh, you, actually you can uh, set several uh, uh, Y, uh, access so you can compare some of your data and of course this one is really nice because uh, you can have uh, a lot of colors without uh, setting them in terminal without uh, all the extra work that you have to do in apes uh, another uh, plotting tool is viewer uh, you can use this one to uh, check your uh, images that could be fits images or uh, uh, images that you prepared out from your uh, measurement set. Uh, you will get uh, two windows, one with uh, viewer display panel and one with uh, data manager. You need to select your image, uh, push any of these buttons. There are just different kinds of images like raster images or control map, whatever you would like to see. Uh, and you will get some something like this, this window. There are a lot of uh, useful stuff that you can uh, check with this one. For example, here, there is some animation uh, with uh, stuff that you can uh, do to your image. For example, you can uh, 
zoom in, zoom out. Uh, you can uh, select a region and uh, check here in this small window, uh, check all the parameters of this region, um, like uh, flux density in this one, uh, what's the uh, coordinates of, em of emission peak. Um, also, you can uh, yeah, move uh, your image so you can check different parts of it. Uh, if you have, for example, several peaks on the one map. Um, again, you can uh, run this one outside of CASA. So that's pretty easy to check just some of your images if you don't really want to do all the work, all the calibration stuff and need just some tool to check some images. Um, and of course, an interesting approach to uh, understand how does CASA work uh, is uh, to compare it to apes. And uh, CASA uh, was built uh, on some uh, libraries and some developments on uh, apes++, but that's not the same. That's a completely different thing. Um, and uh, while there, of course, some similarities with apes, between Casa and apes, because they both do about the same thing, uh, there are a lot of uh, differences in their tools. And you will see that there are some uh, similar tasks, but uh, still they do a bit different work. Um, and here we will just compare several uh, tasks. For example, um, you can notice that uh, actually plotting uh, tools are much more powerful, I would say, in uh, CASA because uh, with just one of them, with PlotMS, for example, you can uh, plot both uh, calibration tables, all your data, you can check different kinds of uh, plots. Um, and uh, in apps, it will be different uh, types of tasks. Um, and uh, several of uh, these tasks are really similar. So you can just uh, check for uh, words like uh, calibration or calib, and you will have something about the same uh, but uh, some of them uh, completely different, have completely different names, so and do a bit of different work. So uh, check all of them before trying to use them uh, in the same way that you did it with apes. Uh, and uh, one really interesting and uh, new task is fring or fringe, uh, fringe feed in Casa. Uh, if you will check uh, this list of uh, CASA tasks, you will see that um, there it's still listed as coming soon, but uh, actually you already can have this experimental task in the latest version of CASA. Uh, and um, while we compare CASA to apes, uh, there is a really brief description of the way how you calibrate data with CASA. Um, First of all, you have your original measurement set with uh, uh, only data table, like there is only your original data. Uh, with uh, several uh, calibration tasks, for example, KNCAL, VENPASS, uh, you will obtain separate calibration tables. Uh, that's how you can check them, that's a bit different from apes because you will actually see them in your folder uh, together with your MS uh, folder. You will have all these uh, smaller uh, files of tables uh, with these extensions. Uh, again, there, uh, this list is not complete. That's not all the kind of, tab of tables that you can get. Uh, just uh, several examples, and uh, there are some really specific, like this one, for example. That's um, this one. You will get this one only with will be I data, uh, and uh, these tables. Uh, there are uh, also 
um, will appear in your folder with VLA and Alma data. So they are uh, kind of general. Um, here you have small descriptions of them, but you can uh, read more uh, with the links in this presentation. Uh, and uh, that's uh, really important to use uh, task applical because uh, you need to apply your uh, calibration tables to your original data. And then you will get uh, a new uh, column in your table with uh, data that will be corrected data. Uh, and actually, exactly this thing you need to plot if you would like to check uh, uh, results of your uh, calibration with, uh, for example, plot MS, uh, you need to choose not only access, but also you need to make sure that you plot your uh, corrected data, not original data. Uh, always check it. Uh, and again, uh, you can check all these tables, each of them uh, with a task browse table. Um, and a bit of uh, description of uh, CASA will be I. Uh, as I said, original CASA was uh, developed uh, especially only for VLA and ALMA data sets. So only for uh, compact arrays. Um, as we know that uh, calibration process is a bit different for compact arrays. You do both amplitude and phase calibrations in a bit different way. So uh, to, uh, to like uh, extend these uh, tasks to uh, VLBI arrays, we need to uh, adjust this task and we need to apply some new tasks, new tools uh, for uh, working with VLBI data. And the next uh, step in this uh, evolution of the CASA, uh, it was uh, uh, applying of some uh, Python scripts. They work they work outside of uh, CASA. Uh, you first do something with the scripts and then you can press uh, proceed to CASA standard calibration steps. Again, there will be absolutely different task for um, uh, fringe uh, for calibration of phases, uh, but uh, most of it uh, was just uh, done outside CASA with some scripts. But right now, uh, these scripts and tools, uh, they are added to CASA and now you can try to use them inside this environment. Uh, they are still experimental, but uh, already uh, they work and uh, you can actually uh, calibrate data from uh, arrays like even, for example, will be. Uh, and uh, some uh, conclusions maybe for this talk is uh, what you should expect from CASA. Uh, first of all, that's uh, up-to-date and really user-friendly uh, uh, software. So uh, you can uh, expect that there will be all the uh, latest, for example, uh, with uh, this, uh, transfer from uh, Python 2 to Python 3. Uh, right now there is a new version of CASA and we can be sure that uh, this development will continue. Uh, there will be all the new stuff, all the uh, new uh, software features. Um, and also with uh, CASA, we have uh, all these nice windows with colors, with buttons, and that's really easy to use. For example, when you just try to explain something to your students, uh, that's not that shocking for them. <laughs> just to have uh, these windows that you can uh, click several buttons and uh, see uh, your image. You shouldn't type all of that in your terminal. I suppose that that's a really nice feature for uh, modern, nice uh, software for uh, data reduction, astronomical data reduction. Um, 
again, since uh, CASA grows and evolves, uh, you can find uh, lots of uh, information online. You can uh, always uh, expect that you will get help if you need any help with your task, with your data, if you have any problems. Uh, uh, and uh, while there are some always some problems with uh, new releases, uh, you can be sure that a lot of other people uh, check the new version and you will have updates uh, pretty soon and um, your data will be uh, safe. Uh, of course, there are some things that you shouldn't expect from CASA and I wouldn't say that's a bad thing that I put here some uh, in just uh, some interesting things that I think you also need to know about CASA. That's uh, definitely not APES++, plus plus, so that uh, won't go anywhere. Uh, you could be uh, uh, sure that uh, you need to learn it, that, uh, for example, your students will use it later with their data reduction. Um, if you are the student, uh, that's nice for you to know CASA, not only APES, uh, and that will be really useful in your work. Um, but also note that uh, as any growing and uh, developing uh, software, uh, it uh, needs some space on your computer and uh, all this plotting of data and uh, calibration steps, they will take some time. So uh, you need to be patient. Uh, you need to give it a chance <laughs> to work. Um, and uh, again, if you have any problems, if you think that it takes uh, too much time, you can ask, uh, you can uh, write to any help desk and uh, check what can you do because you always can reduce your uh, size of your data and uh, adjust some tasks. Uh, and also uh, that's good that we have uh, these up-to-date uh, software that is created especially for us, for our work. Uh, that's not like some uh, Excel, for example, because we all heard about these stories when uh, some uh, I think medicine workers, that was like something about genes, uh, and they had to uh, rename their uh, genes that they found uh, in take to continue working with Microsoft Excel, just because they don't have any better uh, software. And uh, actually, I would like, before you ask me questions, I would like to ask you, uh, what do you think? What's your CASA level right now? Uh, you can uh, participate in uh, this pool uh, using information from here uh, or scanning this QR code. I will wait a bit so everybody can join us. Um, you can do it with your phone or from your uh, computer anyway. Uh, and I think that we are ready to start this pool. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's updating still. <laughs> uh, okay, and it looks like most of us are beginners. So I was um, a bit scared that my presentation is uh, too basic and probably it will be not interesting for most of you, but I'm happy if uh, I gave you some useful information if you are just beginner and you really just started to work uh, with this software. Okay, I, I see that there are still voting, so we'll keep it for a bit. Uh, and also, uh, that's really good if you will try to use uh, this application for voting because uh, we will use it with our quiz on the last day um, of this workshop. It will be something like this, but with uh, several options for answering so it will be really quiz, not just pulling. Okay, how many participants do we have? About 100, but I think that's... Okay, I think that we have our 
uh, general statistics here. Uh, really nice to see that there are different kinds of <laughs> uh, users in our workshop. Uh, okay, I think that we're ready to stop this one. Okay, now we'll see counting. <laughs> okay, um, thank you very much. I think that I think it's a bit earlier, but uh, we can still discuss uh, this introduction to pass. Uh, uh, I'm uh, ready to answer you to Mattermost. Uh, that's lecture number one. Uh, you can uh, send me uh, your questions. Uh, that's my uh, uh, username in Mattermost. Uh, so please feel free to ask any questions. And also uh, you can uh, send me email if you would like to talk about uh, something in more details or you have any specific questions because for example, we can uh, discuss with you uh, data reduction for spectral lines, something that most probably will not cover it yet uh, to in to details. So please feel free to write to me. Uh, and thanks to our sponsors. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Olga. It's always strange to lecture to a screen only and you have no yeah. interaction with the public. So it's really nice to see that, Paul. Thank you for that. Um, so I'll hand the floor to, uh, to Benito as co-chair to see if there's any questions. Yeah, so there has been a few of them that you may see answered already, mostly technical. So if you want to pull more questions now concerning CASA, things like that. Yeah, we've free, free to put it in. Uh, 10 minutes left for your lecture as well, uh, Olga. Did you have any more poll questions or not? Oh, <laughs> I didn't prepare it. No, sorry. okay, no, that, that's fine. That's, uh, that's okay. So may maybe just just a few remarks related to the, the technical questions. Uh, some people are asking about different CASA versions. We chose CASA five six and five seven because they have uh, all the field BI functionality implemented, uh, and and this is all been tested and verified extensively for continuum data. And we're still in the process of doing this for spectral line data, especially maser observations. All the functionality should be there in the fringe fitter, but we do not give you guarantee that it also gives you sensible results. And, and as part of this workshop, if you are an experienced field BI uh, person, we really welcome your feedback in this. So if you test this and you run into problems or you see functionality that you would like to see, but it's, it's lacking or it's really not there at all, do let us know, and uh, this will all be uh, included in, in future plans for uh, development. And we have one question from Anna in Mattermost. Um, it's like a, the question is if the measurement sets are always changed after each task. So. Oh, oh, yeah, that, uh, that's um, an important thing. Uh, like uh, you will have a separate columns of data, for example, corrected data, right? So you don't really change your original data set. Uh, but still, for example, with uh, PlotMS, you can just uh, select a part of, uh, of this plot and plug it. And then it will be really hard to unplug this data if you did something uh, wrong. So. I advise you, at least with a couple of your first runs of uh, CASA, uh, have a backup version of your original data. Uh, try to start with some small uh, data sets so you can uh, copy them in a separate folder and you can just try to play with them because, uh, yeah, you can undo all the stuff that you did with your data, but uh, sometimes that's really hard and you need to understand what exactly you would like to undo. And that's uh, tricky for uh, beginners, for people who don't have enough experience with CASA. So uh, yeah, you, that's not like uh, your data is completely screwed, but you better to have a copy of it. Yeah, my experience is usually the flags, which are uh, yeah, yeah, at some point, I, I did, they, I'm not sure they become corrupt, but undoing all the flags is, is tricky. And then yeah. it helps the data itself. 
in the MS is, is not touched. Yeah. And uh, but every time you apply a calibration table, data is flagged, which does not have a corresponding calibration entry in the table. So if you do that several times, you can end up with not seeing any data, but that's because of the flagging. Any, any other questions that are popping up, Anita? Yeah, another question is if CASA can handle right now all types of interferometric radio data or if plans to do that in the future. Um, as I said, originally it was created only for ALMA and VLA data, so you can be sure that you can uh, reduce any kinds of VLA and ALMA data sets. Uh, that's more tricky with VLBI data sets because we just not just started it, but uh, this work is still uh, ongoing. So, uh, for example, in the latest uh, version of CASA, they especially say that uh, these uh, tasks, they're experimental and uh, we still need to treat them with uh, some uh, you need to be careful with them. Uh, but uh, as a plant, uh, CAS is supposed to be applicable for all kinds of data. You can work with any of them, compact arrays, VLBI, uh, and even single dish data. So at least that plan. Yeah, maybe I can add to that for, for future developments for really long-term future, there is actually plans to completely overhaul the CASA package, which is now uh, the development that's called Next Generation CASA, uh, Next Generation Infrastructure, which has a fundamentally different approach to, uh, to data processing. Uh, it's completely parallel. And this is something that is uh, many, many years, uh, well, I, I'm, I can't see into the NRL planning, still, but it's still several years away. Um, so the current CASA can definitely handle the majority of data. It's mostly the functionality that, as Olga said, may not always be uh, completely integrated yet or still experimental. Anything else, Benito, for us? Yes, they're asking if someone knows if it's uh, CASA supports also JC, WT. The, um, yeah, uh, well, the, yeah. the, the, the I don't remember the expansion <laughs> now. Um, James Clark. Uh, JC and T or the, the, the... JC, WT. Uh, JWST or JC and T? Hmm. I don't see the question, so I can't see if there's. Yeah. Hmm. JCMT. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so many letters. Yeah. JCMT. <laughs> mm. yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Actually, I don't know for sure. Never tried this one, so. But I suppose probably you need to check uh, data re uh, CASA release page because I don't know each and every telescope. <laughs> it was it, it was in the Event Horizon Telescope Array, and that has been date a process with CASA as an interferometer. Yeah? Okay. But for the, the, the single dish JCMT data, I don't know. But it's interesting to give it a try. And sometimes they are not publicly cataloged as supported, but does, so that doesn't imply that it's not supported, actually. So yeah, from some telescopes, it may be a bit tricky to know. I know, I know that the, the, the SMA, um, which is the other millimeter telescope on OI, is, um, is trying to convert their data reduction pipeline or data reduction package to CASA. Mm -hmm. But that's an interferometer and JCMT isn't. A single dish, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Mark. Um, what about Westerwork? Actually, that's a good question, local. Yeah. That is a good question, actually. Yeah. <laughs> people, I, have, people have done it. I've done it yeah. in CASA, <clears throat> yeah, but that's been a while. Um, in, in principle, it should be no problem um, if you have the, the, the calibration tables. Uh, should I continue to use Myriad? <laughs> Um, that's a trick question for people in Jive. You know, we are hosted by the Astron uh, <laughs> building people. 
Um, I, I would not recommend to continue to use Myriad. It, I'm not uh, depending on how much it's still being maintained for Westerbork. So that would be a question to ask the people who are uh, the operations in, uh, in, in Westerbork if they uh, what they would advise there. But it's, it's possible to calibrate Westerbork data with CASA for sure. Um, and um, something that, that, that we will show later, um, I'm not sure if that's in Benito's presentation, is that there is a new development uh, that is called CARTA, which is a viewer data analysis viewer that's being developed in collaboration with the CASA team, which is uh, probably going to replace uh, KVIS and, and things like DS9 in next couple of, in next year. Mm -hmm. um, and that infrastructure is so fundamentally different that, that I would definitely recommend to start making that switch towards those packages also for the larger data fractions that are coming up. Any more questions, Benito? Is there anything else that we're missing? Yes, I'm sorry, I'm reading. Uh, how CASA is managing processing time during the step tasks uh, like in comparison with apes, like how long it can take a calibration task procedure right now in CASA compared to apes? I haven't tried to compare time for sure, but yeah, it takes some time, I think, with CASA. It's a bit yeah. slower yeah, on the same think... processor. Uh, but this is mainly due to the way that CASA uses the memory. So if you have a single processor laptop, you will notice the difference. Um, but CASA also has MPI options. So if you really want to boost things, that is the perfect way to go to do multi-threading. Um, at the moment, I have not done the one-on-one -on -one comparison with the identical data set, but my, my personal impression is that the, the, the bottleneck is the, the multi-band fringe hitting. So when you're processing all your data, CASA is a little bit slower still, uh, but it's not orders of magnitude. It, it's factors of one and a half, two at most. I think just to oh. add to that, you know, if uh, you, even though the fringe fitting might not be paralyzed, you'll make up for it with all the other tasks that you do later on, like flagging and things like this, which are all paralyzed and you can use external packages too, which also speeds up things like AO flagger, et cetera. So um, it could help in that way. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jack. For a few comparisons, I think also the scaling is different. So if you have a relatively really small data set, or well, of feeds for apes, typically CASA runs faster because you use some more cores than one in apes. But then for large data sets is when yeah, CASA gets a bit slower or scales a bit worse, probably. And then there's the point where the data set gets so large that you can't use apes on it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Although, in the, do we run into that problem in the EVN, uh, Mark? Typically not. Typically, okay. Well, we won't be trying any low for data during this workshop. Um, I, I saw, I, I don't see any new questions popping up, Benito, but I saw in the previous discussions also somebody asking about CASA 6. Um, and, and you're fine to use CASA 6, but you will notice that some of the plotting routines are not supporting the VLBI calibration tables. So that's, it's, it's not a, a showstopper for, for this workshop. If you want to really try and do things in, in Python 3 CASA 6, you can do that. Um, but you will find that PlotCal, uh, most notably PlotCal doesn't work. And there may be a few other smaller nitty gritty details that maybe we don't even know. And we welcome any feedback on that if you have any. Um, but from the NRAO side, uh, CASA 5 and CASA 6 have the same scientific functionality. So the, the fringe fitter, which is in CASA 5, is the same as in CASA 6, uh, and all these tasks are identical. There was another question about how stable is fringe fit. So it's fully functional, functional now in CASA. Um, of course, it's not 10, 20 years old, like the fringe that you have in apes. So you may expect obvious either bugs or few issues because it was just added in the very last version of CASA. But in terms of functionality, everyone can already use it for VLBI data. Yeah, we've, we've had our first VLBI workshop three years ago, almost to the date, which was the first time we had uh, a group of 20 people 
over to Jive to test all the functionality, which was at that time uh, experimentally implemented in a, in a CASA branch and has since then been quite thoroughly exercised, uh, mostly for the continuum data, but uh, spectral line functionality should also be in there now. And as me, Michael Janssen answered in the question, uh, the French filter has extensively been, been tested on EHT data. And that's probably the VLBI data that has been looked at in the most detail of all VLBI data. And uh, so, so the results, when it produces results, um, are, um, are at least as good as, as apes, I'd say. Yeah, and that's an interesting remark. It's good that, he, that, that you mentioned this, uh, Michael, as well, that uh, EHT has not just used uh, CASA and, and also APES at the start, but also used a third package, which is called HOPS, which has a, a different way of approaching VLBI data processing. And even there, CASA just performs uh, equally well, sometimes in some cases slightly better, in some cases slightly worse, but these are marginal differences. So in that sense, it's it's really a, a production field BI data package at this point. Uh, let's see, we're doing for time. We still have a, a, a few more minutes left. I'm not sure if there's any additional questions at this point. Maybe some questions about the, the general introduction, how things are going this week. Yeah, uh, sorry, disappear. Yes, when I was reading. Uh, what do you think about the averaging the two, the two parallel polarizations are R and LL, if that's also possible in fringe fit right now, as you may do in AIDS. Like how CASA work with polarizations during fringe fit? Will I answer that? Yep, I was just about um, to go ahead. I don't know when it's going to be ready. It is possible it's on my list, but it's a question of um my the priorities of cars development. So I, I can't give you a, a timeline for that, but uh, it's already been requested and I, I understand it's uh, important for some people. Um, thanks, Les. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see, I'm checking the matter most. And the other chats. There is one, let me read. So uh, the, we have a question about if in the last version of CASA and fringe feed, uh, it has been fixed an issue that when performing the global fringe uh, in apes, basically, uh, the solutions without our ref antenna, a reference antenna, sorry, were not kept. So that was a problem known in age when you need to change reference antenna because you don't have a, some particular time stamps that antenna, it was really missing the solutions. How that behaves in CASA? I think this, from my experience, this is actually one of the things that CASA does better because you can give fringe fit a list of reference antennas and then it will pick the one that is available but maybe this this is Des, can you clarify a little bit better than you you wrote this code? So thought it was a question. I was answering another one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> There's a question in the QA from Carolina Casadillo about the what what happens to solutions when the reference antenna is not present. Uh, you can give a list of reference antennas and it will work through them. And if none of them is available, then you won't get a solution. And that will mean that if you try to apply that, your, your data will be flagged there. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Do you see any other questions, Benito? Nothing? For 